I feel like I have to correct the record on some allegations that were made about me by probably the most, I would say, internationally known or important NATO mercenary who's been in Ukraine training Ukrainian forces and fighting on the front lines. That's Colonel Andy Milburn. Um, he was interviewed, I guess, two days ago by Going Underground, our friend Afshin Ratanzi's show. And he accused me of essentially fabricating uh, the following footage, which we refer to here at Gray Zone as Whiskey Gate. Um, let's take a look at that footage. For those of you who didn't see it, this is Colonel Andy Milburn of the Mozart Group. The Mozart Group is sort of uh, uh, named as a response to the Wagner Group. Uh, the Russian private mercenary firm that's been extremely active, especially around the Bakhmut area in Ukraine. And so Colonel Andy Mil Milburn, a former U.S. Marine, went into Ukraine with lots of money and his forces to try to counter the Wagner Group and got a lot of positive publicity. But um, I was watching him on this kind of military groupie podcast where they drink whiskey the whole time. They drink like craft whiskey. I don't even know if it's craft whiskey but uh he got loaded he got completely sauced and then he let his mask slip and so i put together some highlights or low lights in this two minute and 20 second video it went completely viral has almost 1 million views right now and uh, did some damage to his reputation society then let you know so i'm not it's a corrupt fucked up society I'm talking about ukraine let, you know so i'm not i'm not big fan of uh ukraine you can hear him he's his, his voice this is, is uh, slurred buffalo trace okay. Um, okay buffalo trace is not that great and the, and the ukrainians are in violation of um the hate convention they, they there is a i forget the exact phraseology but it is we we looked at this closely and it's uh yeah they they should be no filming of uh, the, the phrase, the, the terminology is bringing attention, blah, 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 to media. Um, and yes, the Ukrainians are violating that, you know, I absolutely this they and, and there are, they're filming of a number of things that they're doing with, uh, uh, POWs is violating law of, law of armed conflict and he can't guys, right killing russian prisoners is right and it's interesting because <laughs> nice. in the past in you know you know you like latin america or whatever if u.s uh forces or employees were involved with any force that committed you know yeah. atrocities or, right or whatever back, right you have to yeah, yeah you're yeah. done yeah but we're obviously not going to pull our support from ukraine at this well point. i mean yeah i mean you know these violations. Oh, it's atrocities. No, yeah. I mean it still is. I mean, you, you you shouldn't kill, you shouldn't kill dudes who, I mean, everyone knows who surrendered. I mean, um, and that and there there was plenty of that. But my point is, it's not about. There was Ukraine. plenty of that. We're not like, I happen to have you know Ukraine flag tied to my bag, but I'm not. Oh my God, Ukraine's so awesome. No, because <laughs> I understand that there are plenty of fucked up people running Ukraine. It's not about that. It's about global norms, right? Right, right. It's about Putin. It's like right. allowing it, dudes in the 21st century like Putin right. to do what they want to do. It's a just fight. Yeah, yeah, it is. I love it's when mercenaries like talk about, uh, I love when mercenaries talk about global norms. It's like, you know, let me listen to Joe Camel talk about respiratory health or something. It's, he, he, he essentially forgot that camera was on. Colonel Andy Milburn and said, first of all, Ukraine is a sick society. He's not, even though in the media, he's been presented in the New York times as having got, gotten over this midlife crisis of having participated in Iraq and Afghanistan and really lost his mojo and uh, become disillusioned in Ukraine. He started to find a, a country and a people and a military force that he truly believed in. And then he discounts that and says, it's not really about Ukraine because their leadership is sick. And then he openly divulges that 
the troops that presumably are fighting under his watch have been committing atrocities. And he says, guys, guys, you can't just shoot POWs. And we've seen video after video of Russian POWs being shot in the knees, being executed on camera. So including by the Georgian Legion, which has fought along, which includes many U.S. mercenaries. So that was damaging for Andy Milburn. It's also just kind of hilarious. And so Andy Milburn, through his Mozart group, responded to me. Uh, and it wasn't a very uh, accurate response. So they responded <laughs> in Ukrainian because obviously he needs to reassure his Ukrainian quote unquote partners that he doesn't hate them or think they're sick. And they put together this weird graphic, too, of me. Um, you know, here's me and um, Margarita Simonian, the head of RT, and, you know, Vladimir Putin's behind us. He's like the dark Sith Lord animating the whole thing. I'm much younger there. I don't mind that they use an old photo of me when my face was more taut. Um, but here's the translation. A month ago, American journalist Max Blumenthal published a deep fake video of an interview he had with Andy Milburn, CEO of the Mozart Group. So like every word of that, including the periods and the dashes are lies. <laughs> those aren't words. Those are, I guess. But you know what I'm saying? Everything is a lie. It's not a deep fake. A deep fake is when you use AI technology to impute words to some person that they never said to essentially animate a public figure and make them say things they didn't say. I don't have the technical capacity to do that, but I never would have done it anyway. But there was no deep fake there. There was deep drinking. There was deep <laughs> Buffalo Trace. There was deep Lafroyac. <laughs> Maybe and they meant to spell deep trace, not deep, deep trace. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And then he, they said uh, an interview he claimed he had with Andy Milburn. I never claimed I had an interview with Andy Milburn. The, he was talking to these military groupie guys. Uh, I, I guess they were veterans too. I think everyone could see that. So the gray zone didn't. Under their theory, you, you basically created a video where you pose as two different versions of yourself. Like, Yeah. I, so some, you, you, were, you, you were both those guys that he was talking to? In the video, I guess. Yeah, the guy to the right was really spaced out. He looked like he had some P PTSD or something. And then, you know, I was also like the balding kind of veteran dad in his man cave with like a paunch from, you know, IPA. Um, so then here, the, the, it gets that's crazier. Two, it says two crazy errors in the first tweet. Uh, they, they say the deep fake and that it was an interview you did. Neither of which is true. Okay, but that's two. So that's it gets crazier. In the video, Andy slurred his words. Wait, so he slurred his words, but it's a deep fake. So I, so my AI, Andy, slurred his words, describing his feelings about the war in Ukraine with a somewhat pro-Russia stance. It took several weeks for a detailed examination. Hmm. So he had a pro-Russia stance. I, I, I honestly, I didn't hear anything pro-Russia. He just said that like Ukraine is a corrupt, sick society. I think many Ukrainians would agree with that. It's so I funny. Mean, They're calling that pro-Russia. But I'm also, hey, that. props to AI for being able to slur words. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's impressive what technology can do. <laughs> I mean, he the, Andy Milburn presu presumably approved of this messaging. Yeah, and, and they're basically they're basically saying that his words were pro-Russian. So he's signing off on that. He's like, I got drunk and got pro-Russian. So I just <laughs> got Putin in my brain. And... <laughs> This is this is Putin Trace. Wouldn't it be vodka then that he would be drinking? I don't know. Yeah. All right. So this is the, the crazy one. And they link to this video manipulation, the subtle art of taking things out of context. So if I subtly, subtly took something out of context, that would be very different from a deep fake. Anyway, this is the translation. This video made by the real hosts of the interview shows what Blumenthal had to do to create a fake for his Russian masters. Okay. So I had to watch this video under orders from the GRU Russia's military intelligence unit in order to be able to put together what I actually did in about five minutes on Twitter. <laughs> okay. And it gets even crazier. This is the best one. I don't know if Mozart has like a PR firm, but nobody's seen this. It only has 50 views. Max Blumenthal, they spelled me wrong. Google him. So don't Google Max Blumenthal. Google my 
correctly spelled name, lived in Russia for several years. And he and his Russian wife used to work for RT and Sputnik. Obviously, this attempt to tarnish Mozart's reputation is yet another proof that the organization's activities are interfering with plans. So for, I mean, they're saying that they're so effective and they're interfering with Russia's war plans so effectively that I was tasked by Russian intelligence with creating this deep fake video <laughs> and that I'd spent years in Russia with my Russian wife and that I'm deeply loyal to that society. <laughs> I, I have not spent years in Russia. I spent maybe two and a half days there. Um, my, I don't have a Russian wife, but my wife's name is Anya. So maybe that's why they got that. Although her last name is a common or fairly common name in the Kerala region of India and in Southern India. So they could have actually done some research, I guess. I don't know. Their targeting capabilities aren't very strong, but they just completely made that, that up. And, uh, yeah, I didn't work for RT and Sputnik. My, wife used to uh she was a correspondent and anchor for rt america until 2018 uh so for five years she's been completely independent uh and we have no contact with or connection to russia in any way um so that's andy milburn's response and i'll be and you know i i also issued a sort of formal statement to uh, going underground that um, Andy Milburn, you know, needs to stop chasing the Ukraine aid gravy train and get back on the wagon. 